Welcome back ladies and gents, we're now going to be looking at the last section for this learning aim A um, which is titled Threats to Individuals. So what we're talking about here now and what you need to explore are the different threats, basically dangers, that could face individuals uh, who have data stores about them, stored about them. So as you are uh, might be aware, you know companies will have data on uh, on people. Now those people are customers, obviously, and if it's a hospital or a doctor surgery, then those people are known as patients. But the point is, these are individual people, and therefore there is a um, an issue of keeping that information, that data, safe, because otherwise they could be breaking the law. In my previous uh, video, I talked about how I couldn't give you an example of a data modeling uh, that I use as a teacher for tracking pupil student progress. Um, if you're in my class, you should know what I'm talking about. I use it in most of my lessons. You see it all the time. Um, the point is, I couldn't show it because of data protection issues. So that's about keeping people safe. So what are these uh, these points. Now there are four paragraphs that you need to give. You need to explain uh, the, the point on uh, invasion of privacy. You need to explain fraud. You need to talk about uh, targeting vulnerable groups of people and then uh, the issue of inaccurate data and information. Um, everything you need for this section is on page 84 and 85. Please have a look. I'm going to read through some of the points here now as we go through each one. So you want to start off with a small introduction talking about how data security for individuals are important and how businesses cannot afford to not keep data safe. I'll give you an example. Any business, there's no exception, whether it be a school, private sector, like phones for you or uh, Selfridges, uh, or even a hospital or doctor surgery. No business, whether it be in the pro private or the public sector, can afford to not keep data safe, especially when we're talking about people, individual data. Um, because if you don't, Basically, you run the risk of getting sued and being closed or shut down. Uh, and some people might even uh, be sent to prison, depending on how serious it is. So modern life involves the recording of large quantities of data about many aspects of people's lives. Where they are, what they spend money on, and who they communicate with. In this section, we're going to be looking at security threats that individuals, the individual people, what they face. We're going to look at threats related to data collected by organizations about individuals, which can be annoying or unpleasant and might cause distress or damage. There are many different threats and their impact can range from minor to major. So let's look at the first one, the invasion of privacy. With so much data about uh, people's private lives stored in computer systems, there is a potential threat to their privacy. Mobile phone service providers, for example, keep records about what numbers you call, how long and when you call them. The information could be used to build up a picture of your private life and who you communicate with. Information collected by banks about our credit and debit card purchases and other transactions, as well as data collected by retailers, retailers about our purchases, mean that a comprehensive record of our lives exists across a variety of computer systems. This can lead to concerns about privacy, how the information might be used, and the problems that might be caused if it fell into the wrong hands. Whilst in most situations this data uh, is collected and used for legitimate reasons, the potential exists for the data to be misused. This can sometimes just be annoying, such as promotional emails or letters. However, there, uh, there are also possibilities that the data collection may cause distress or damage. For example, by encouraging people who, already in, who are already in debt to take an additional financial commitment, such as loans. Many people willingly contribute to the amount of data held about them by using social media sites such as Facebook or Instagram to post personal information about themselves, such as their date of birth, where they live and work and when they are away on holiday. Those with malicious intentions, such as stalkers, burglars, cyber bullies, could potentially use this information. I'll give you another example. There was a big hoo-ha a few years ago about Google knowing where you go. Most people have smartphones nowadays, whether it be a cheap one or an expensive one that might cost you a few thousand, you know, thousand pounds, twelve hundred pounds, thirteen hundred pounds. Most of us use uh, a smartphone, and most smartphones have GPS, and therefore most of us use Google, Google Maps to be more specific. And what people don't realise is that Google Maps, every time we use it, every time we go somewhere, there is a risk, and it it stores data, it stores information on where you are going and where you are. And there have been issues in the past where people um, have gotten into trouble 
you know, for um, marital issues, you know, people uh, not being faithful to their other halves and going uh, places they shouldn't be going and their spouses checking on their location using their GPS and using apps to find out where they are and therefore families breaking up. Now, obviously, I'm not going to comment on the individual dealings of and, and the life choices that these, these, these people make, but the point still remains that, you know, there are apps and there are there is data out there um, pinpointing your exact location. Um Going back to this whole Facebook issue, you know, time and time again, I talk ab uh, about how it's so dangerous nowadays. People can um, basically dissect your life and find out where you live and who you are and what you have in your house and when the most opportune time might be to go into your house and break in and steal your belongings because on Facebook you're so used to saying where you're, you know, when you leave the country, when you go abroad and what you're up to, and you know, and and individuals knowing exactly what you have in your house because every time you get something for Christmas or for your birthdays you're posting it online so there's so many different issues that people don't realize and it's all linked to privacy so this is why most companies have to uh, you know one they have to ask for permission before they take certain information that's where there's a that tick box most in most uh, uh, forms that you fill in um, asking for permission for them to use that data to store that data maybe even share it with their sister companies companies that they work with then there's a the issue of keeping the data that you give give permission for them to have and hold for them to keep it safe in the set in the first place and if they don't it means that your privacy has been you know invaded it's been taken um, so I hope that makes sense. You know, think about celebrities. Think about how uh, so many celebrities, you know, uh, you know, their privacy being invaded uh, because they're famous, and the hope with the hope that you know, if they have something juicy to sell to, you know, uh, the tabloids, they'll be making some easy cash. Um, so you know, a lot of famous people are caught out, you know, off guard because of their privacy being invaded, because of them using social media, because of them not checking uh, their privacy settings, and you know, because companies not taking care of their data. Fraud. Data held by organizations could potentially be used for fraudulent purposes, such as obtaining money illegally, which could cause severe distress. Fraud is not just about money. It could be about your ID as well, your identity. Um, I often use this story. Uh, a few, many years ago, back when I was at university, I had a friend who was an upcoming modern, uh, uh, model male model who was doing really really well he was going for competitions and he was he was doing he was doing really well basically he was you know making a name for himself and he was in the spotlight now facebook was uh, just coming into the scene at that moment and he obviously had an account and he was using that platform to sell himself and his his uh, online presence as most people do nowadays in so many different platforms such as instagram as well as facebook and other places like youtube now what happened was that someone um obviously saw this as an opportunity to use his information and created another fake clone duplicate Facebook page with his name with his pictures and he obviously had a whole host and a collection of data that he could use so all he had to do is go to my friend's model page and copy every picture that he had copy the information and go to Facebook and basically create a new account and use the same pictures and same information with a slight change. His intention was to basically use that data, pretend he was a model himself to get the numbers of other girls. As I said, he was a model, he's quite a good looking guy and he was damaging his, re his reputation because when he wasn't successful or when he was successful, it doesn't make a difference, he was obviously creating this other persona and it was giving him, my friend, the model, a bad name. And it wasn't until a few weeks or months later that someone actually approached him and said, look, th th there seems to be another account somewhere and this person's doing some dodgy stuff. Do you know about this? Is this you or is this someone else? And obviously, to his surprise and shock, he had to go and report to Facebook and it was closed down. But the, th the point is, it was he was damaged. He, his his pr reputation was damaged because... You know, this again was at the beginning when Facebook was first coming out, and some things weren't looked into as well as po as uh, as a uh, as it possibly could. And there was an issue. Obviously, there's still he could maybe, and there was obviously a chance that maybe he didn't check his privacy settings as well. But the point is this: fraud takes in in so many different shapes and form. It could be 
identity theft, uh, uh, you know, pretending to be someone else. Um, and it could be because of simply damaging someone's reputation to do something else, you know, uh, like collecting numbers and speaking to people and socialising. But then other, there, there's the, uh, other issues as well. People could use your identity to get credit cards and run a bill and a debt on your name while, you know, they make these purchases and not make any payments. Uh, again, damaging someone's credit score. To more extreme, serious things like... Um, Making big purchases, taking out massive loans and mortgages, or stealing straight, you know, outright money from the individual's account, bank accounts. Targeting vulnerable groups of people. With so much data available about individuals, some of which may be publicly accessible on social media sites, people with malicious intentions can target vulnerable groups such as young people, the elderly, and people with disabilities. Elderly people, for example, are often unfamiliar with technology and can uh, be, be vulnerable to scams such as unsuitable financial investments. Young people may share information on social media, which could result in data about them being collected and shared with third parties. People with disabilities may share information that may lead to them being targeted by specific adverts. Um, there's other things as well. Uh, think about um, catfishing. That's another type of targeting uh, where people fall for a scam. Um, and if you don't know what that is, have a look at it. Go online, check what uh, catfishing is. Now, it you might find it's uh, funny until you know someone, or if it, hap it happens, it happens to you. Because at the end of the day, it's another form of um, uh, a con, basically. Uh, because what happens is it's not just about an emotional. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Emotional damage and hurt and pain that people, the, the, the individuals go through. But in most cases, what, they, what, end up, what ends up happening is that the individual pretends to be someone with fake pictures, um, using attraction and creating an online persona, forming a bond and relationship with that person, then introducing a problem, a fake problem. This person is in some financial issues, financial difficulties, and then says, listen, I need some help. Could you help me? And you'd be surprised how many people actually fall for that con and end up sending money to a stranger who may not even be the same gender as they initially thought. So these things happen, and it tends to happen to certain individuals, people who might be a little naive, um, who've never experienced these kind of things before, who may be using the internet for the first time for a number of reasons, because they're really young or very, very old. And the last point that you need to talk about is the issues with inaccurate data and information. With so much data about us and our lives held on computer systems, the consequences of inaccurate information can be quite serious. For example, when moving to a new house, you need to change the address that your bank has for you. The easiest way to do this is via your online banking site when you log on. However, if you accidentally enter the date address incorrectly and letters, uh, and letters your bank send, to you are returned to the bank, the bank will block your account and you will need to contact them to correct the error. Errors, is computerized, errors in computerized billing systems are not uncommon, with customers occasionally receiving bills that are clearly incorrect. So if information isn't accurate, it means that statements could be sent to the wrong people, it means that money could be sent to the wrong person or people or wrong address, uh, it means that you know you could be trying to go and sort something out but you can't because, you know, let me give you an example. For example, your, your name is inaccurate. They have it on their files that your name is wrong. So the only way you can prove that is, um, is by going to speak to them. But the problem is then is most cases, let me give you a different example actually. If your address was wrong, yeah, let's just say the, uh, I don't know, the door number was wrong. Then the bank will ask you to go there. Uh, which again is an in a huge inconvenience because you have to book time, you have to go there physically, uh, a time that might not be suitable um, in your busy time and schedule, uh, and taking time out of your busy life, um, and then speak to someone, and they'll say, okay, we need two or three forms of identity, so left uh, ID, so we're talking about a driving license or a passport or a birth certificate, right? Because that proves your name and your age, your date of birth. But what if it's an issue with the name? Then the ID will make it difficult because the ID is your name. So you go in there with a different name to prove that the name is wrong. Because then, to see what I mean? Now, don't get me wrong, I'm sure banks will have um, different strategies in place. One, they'll do their utmost to make sure the name is not wrong when their accounts get set up in the first place. So it's highly you know, unlikely that will take place. 
and, and secondly, they'll have other secondary precautions or procedures in place to make sure that these kind of mistakes can be fixed in, in, in different ways because, as I said, reputation of a business is very, very important. But the, the point still stands that if the information is in, inaccurate, then it's, it's not going to work. And let me give you another example. Let's talk about schools. Um, I am in the process of you know, um, organising a, a trip, a business studies trip for some UNI students um, going into year 10 next year uh, to Germany. Now, there's going to be a lot of correspondence from the school, letters going to parents and guardians, carers, uh, giving them updates, talking about you know deposits and money that's, monies that need to be sent to the school, things that they need to be aware of, um, you know, a, a list of items that they need to bring along with them, and the list goes on and on. Now, if, if on our file and our system we don't have the most up-to-date details of each individual student and their parents, i.e. then uh, addresses, or email addresses, then we might be sending letters thinking, right, okay, we're keeping them informed, but why Why are they not responding? Why isn't the next set of deposits not you know, handed, handed in yet? Um, or even worse, they may not be aware when the when the date of the actual trip is. You know, that's just an extreme example, but the point still stands. If we don't have that information, they could be missing out on very, very important information. It's the same thing with your doctors. If the doctors don't know where you live because you've changed addresses and you fail to tell them, they could be checking. Uh, they could be asking, sending letters to you, you about certain injections that you need because of your situation, um, or medical, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, conditions, but you are not aware of it because you didn't tell them, and you, you know, you're not getting those letters. Uh, more importantly, what if private personal data or letters are sent to you on an address that you moved from, that's now occupied by someone else, that's a stranger to you. And therefore, that person now has the information that could be quite embarrassing that you don't want anyone else to know. So, you know, the, those are just some examples of why, in, you know, having um, inaccurate data or information is a dangerous thing, is a bad thing, is a threat to individuals. I hope that makes sense. You want a nice paragraph for each one, more obviously if you can. Um, I've given you plenty of different ideas there. Of course, you've got page 84 and 85 to help you as well.